The Germans grabbed my arm. I had to make a fist. They slammed the arm onto a table and with a hypodermic needle, every little dot was injected until it became, in my case, the number B7648. In the middle of the night, they kicked down the door. They were yelling and screaming. My mom and dad were at a loss. They grabbed me to protect me, especially from the German shepherds, which were pretty much at my level. They took us out on the truck. I, of course, was scared. I was confused. I had no way of doing anything to escape. We were taken off and we were greeted by people who had an emaciated, hollow look. They really moved like zombies. My father was forced to work repairing the electrified fences. My mother made iron plates that went under the military boots. I, miraculously, was given the chance to work in the agriculture department. The food ration that you received was a single loaf of bread, a watery cabbage soup, intentionally non-nutritional. That was your total food for the week. As far as I was concerned, I had an escape mechanism from that level of starvation by stealing food as much as I could. The way I stole it was by putting holes in my pocket, let the seats fall down to my ankles where the pant leg had been tightened up. I was able to pass inspection by being patted down. Had I been detected, I would have become what the Germans called Sunday's entertainment the execution by hanging. One of the saddest moments in the ghetto was that when my dad came home, laid down since there was no furniture, and simply expired. The sidewalk would be littered by the corpses of those that had passed away the night before. And they had a wagon pulled by two or three people come and collect the corpses. That to me was more painful than seeing my dad give up his life or pass away. What will be done to him after he passed? When I went to work the next morning, I did see him laying naked, waiting to be picked up by this wagon, taking to a grave where already several people had been buried, and plop, you fall down into a heap of bodies. That was painful. One Nazi dragged my mom away and he said, you belong over there on the other side. I didn't call mommy or anything like this. There was no time to do this. I realized very quickly to see my mother again is not ever, ever going to happen. They shaved our hair. They pushed us through an archway and doused us with a painful liquid. We were washed for about 10 seconds and I'm pushed against a large building with a huge smokestack and an enormous flame and a most obnoxious odor that we could not recognize. We were packed in with a density of standing room only. You could hardly move. We hear a noise and realize that looking up, Two airplanes were circling the train. They had circular insignias, predominantly French fighter planes, and also accompanied by British fighter planes. They misrecognized and designated as apparently returning German military. And that was my good fortune to be at the very front of the wagon and not be in the trajectory of the machine got fired when they had made two runs. We lost about 30 to 40% of the inhabitants of each wagon. With all the carnage, the train went on. Those of us who could survive on a piece of bread and a bowl of soup simply hung in. Suicides into the electrified wires, finding maybe an excuse to be shot to end their life was not unusual. On Friday, April 11, at 
we hear a very unfamiliar noise, a mechanical noise. I see a tank coming up. Being familiar with German insignia, I didn't see that. What I saw instead, of all things, was a white star of David. The commander wore a uniform of the United States Third Army, headed by General George Patton. It's difficult to reach up 88 and see the world not get along with one another. I witnessed Kosovo, Somalia, Darfur, Rwanda, and another 20 different genocides since World War II. And one Sunday morning seeing Mr. Trump ask the audience, the supposed supporter, to raise their hand and give an oath. Things like this are not very welcome to somebody who survived the Holocaust. Democracy, I believe, has a chance to be greatly diminished in our country. Are we actually going to build a fence around our country and make a ghetto out of the United States? Are we going to have 11 million people sent out and make refugees? I just simply cannot accept that America goes the way of Germany at one time. Have we learned anything about World War II, Korean War, Vietnam, Iraqi wars? People choose not to live in peace based on certain agendas, whether political or in some cases religious. So we have to learn not just from a Holocaust because it is a historical fact that people don't seem to be able to live in peace and in agreement for a better life.